Hi, welcome to Down the Shed. So, this time round, I am going to build this IC station, what I'm calling a musical box. There will be a link in the description to this item and the homepage. Both links are affiliated. I will get up to 8% commission on any purchases you make. But if you use Shed-ICS, these are quite sharp, well not sharp, but rough edges on these. Just get, you literally just need to, uh, no pressure, just let the weight of the pad itself run across the side of that board and it will be smoother than a baby's body. So we've got this typical uh, English Chinese jobby. Camera can see that. So we'll get a decent picture of that and put in the uh, in the video. But it is enough. E B C. Okay, so the transistor actually goes into the one of the transistors actually goes into this uh, chip on board. PCB as per the diagram let's get this in the camera somehow there we go so you can see that at home just in case you didn't get instructions or lost them or not sure we've got the schematic on the back again I'll put a picture on that you can sort of pause on or whatever. So we'll keep that to one side. Oh, ladybird, they bite. So we've got, let's use this sponge pad area for the uh, components. So we've got, uh, is that a little glassy one, Zena? And that one looks like a shock key type diode. There's our buzzer. We have a couple of yellow LEDs. Now I might keep the diffused ones and put clears in. It's a bit more of a surprise what colours are coming. And I get a few more in my collection. So I'll just pause you there a moment. Okay, so here's the circuit board. I'll turn it around so it's the right way up for you. Okay, so now we'll carry on with... I think we'll put the LEDs in. So we're back on the nice camera phone, so decent audio. So remembering the short leg goes with the flat line on the silk screen or the flat line on the end of the arrow for the diode as the uh, picture goes. At least these two are in the right place, or these four rather, that's the yellow. and the remaining yellow. So, three or four, well, depending on what you put in, two to four joints and clean your iron, otherwise you'd just end up with stale solder and it will start not wanting the stick. And even though you've got solder on your iron, always add more in because it's the, the new flux that helps it all clean the contaminants off the board and flow better. Hopefully the uh, ones I've chosen shouldn't be too different voltage-wise. I think the yellows are all roughly about 3.2 anyway. Right, this is the 1N... 4007 shot key diode, I think. We've got the rising clamp circuit connector and the on off. I just need to check something on the website. I haven't just checked with the picture, these. There's two like outer little uh this camera. There's two sort of out of protruding legs. They go out and away from the speaker. 
So that's the correct way for that to go in. Now we just need to feed it into those little holes. So yeah, that's in. Right, so we blue tack those down. Bridged it and unbridged it. I'll have that for a minute. Out of the way. Uh, turn it off for a moment. So we snip these two down. So that's our switch, shock key diode, and I'm going to leave the speaker to last so it won't interfere with this so basically we want to get these three transistors in next so as you can see on the shape of the board semi well almost circular with a flat edge so that matches up the uh, three-sided shape of the transistor with the flat edge so that's the three transistors in there is a fourth but we'll have far much more fun with that later they're going to sit in place quite happily. Bung that over. Round. This bit we're saving to last, but we'll actually do the speaker last. We're going to save ourselves the space between this resistor and this speaker to work with. So we'll get the three uh, Zener diodes, I think they are, 4148s. We get those in the capacitor in, and then we'll tackle uh, this bit. So it's a 1UF 50 volt electrolytic capacitor. Usual precautions, long leg positive, short leg ne negative. They've marked a pause on there, so we know that's a long leg. And the, uh, the white side of the circle matches up with the minus and the white side of the capacitor as usual. So normal precautions there. Pop that little puppy in. And then dab a blue tack. Actually we'll do the blue tack in a minute. So we've got three uh I think there's Zener diodes. Using the uh sponge tray on this helping hands from Lidl's as the component tray, it's quite handy. So again, black stripe on the uh, diodes with the white stripe or the white marked area on the board. Right, so that's the three diodes all in place and the cap. So we'll just bung some blue tack on and we'll tack those down. That's the three Zener diodes and the electrolytic 1UF, uh, was it 50 volt? Yeah, 50 volt electrolytic cap. Our three 9012 transistors are all set in a nice little line here. So that's so far. So I don't think we've got much choice now. We've either got to put the speaker and the uh, variable resistor in, or we've got to deal with this area. And I'm really not sure what's going on there. As you can see, not a lot, but that transistor seems to be sitting through two of them holes. The first two on the left near the speaker. Right, um, yeah, in the picture, you can see two of the terminals are connected to the two leftmost. So if that's facing inward, the chip's facing in the board, away from the speaker, <coughs> like that. <coughs> I need to orientate the board. So 
see if I can explain what I can see without you having, well, you should hopefully have seen the picture that I've put on the uh, screen. <coughs> Excuse me. So if that's on here like this, what I can see in the picture is the transistor is behind it with the flat side facing forwards. I've got two legs poking through. I can see three three legs poking through, but two of them go to the left most two of these holes here. So these two. So I'm guessing they go through all three of these of the four. And that one just doesn't go anywhere else. And these two go into here. Number three and number four really I can't see they've had anything done and I think this one's been well one of these two has been tagged on to this last one so that's what I'm going to go with so we'll see what happens right so as you can see I'll show you this diagram quick so you can see quite clearly the emitter at the base and the collector marked let's go down there we go EBC so I followed that and that's with the uh, transistor basically flat up against the back of the board here which is quite handy so I'm going to solder those three down quick right that's those three on when it's on the board I think we'll have to connect this last terminal here which is basically the positive onto this terminal that bit all the way so yeah there we go the transistors flat sides up against the board the legs are poked through now these two I think go into the board because the first two holes in that picture it's showing I think with this leg up but we'll snip that so we'll poke those two in there like so So I'm going to try and put in some solder paste. Oop, I'm miles away now. In the um, board area here. Try and get a bit on the actual board itself. We'll heat that with the soldering iron. There we go, and that's actually tacked in place now. So we'll just solder these two down. So if they gave you a picture of the finished board upside down, you can see what's been soldered in there and what hasn't. You can see the solder ran through on that first one. So that appears, from what I can see in the picture, to be correct. Ooh, careful. I better just reflow that. Just be sure. There we go. Nicely does it. So yeah, in the picture, those two. I'll show you the original picture as well. Those two don't appear to be. Oh, get you back in. Don't appear to be connected into anything. These two here. So, I'll get the speaker in and then that other uh, resistor, a variable or adjustable, whatever. 
and we are done. Power it up and see if it's a yay or a nay. I can't discredit this one. Because if anything does go wrong, it's probably my build quality. That's plus, that's minus. No indication on the board. Right, that's the speaker on board. We'll just pin him down. As I say, if this doesn't work, it's not the board's fault. It's more likely mine. I've done something with that chip that I don't understand. I've wired it as best as I can see. We might have to try and trace the circuit diagram. See if there's something I haven't or should have done. Right, so let's get these last three done. Oh, that's been melted in plastic. Oh, that's nasty. Let's clean the tip. Got some solid resin here. Clean the tip off with. We ain't that nasty. Oh, look at that. Lovely and clean. So now all we need is power. So hang on. So I'm going to try and get you a close up on that. I'm going to raise this light up to give you light the board up a bit more. So as best as I can get it. As you can see, let me get my tweezers. There we go, that's in picture. As you can see, the first and second hole, which is the first and third pin of the transistor, have been soldered in. And the next two pins are not connected and the very end pin next to the chip on board that's been soldered down to the board because that's VCC or the positive. So the middle pin only goes through the emitter I think. That only solders into the board and then you can cut it short. So it's the first and third pin go into the first and second hole on the board there. So as you can see there's the transistor and that's as good as I can get you. So it's now got jumper cables going to a 5 volt USB. Does it work? Oh, let's get you in picture. Will it work? Well, it's not my birthday, but it does work. It's a bit of an anticlimax. It's programmed to happy birthday. Let's try the adjustment of this. There we go. Now we've got some go in it. So apologies for the microscope footage not being recorded. I don't know what's happening between the computer and that. Or my watching my phone, to be honest. It's all playing up at the moment. Um, so this is just to give you a quick glimpse over of the entire finished board. I have changed 